Welcome back to The Bulwark Goes to Hollywood. My name is Sonny Bunch. I'm culture editor at The Bulwark. Uh, and I'm very pleased to be rejoined today uh, by Rene Reyes of the Paley Center. Uh, he is uh, here. Uh, he is, I'm sorry, he's the vice president of programming and festivals at the Paley Center. Uh, and we've got uh, Paley Fest coming up again in a couple of months. Tickets uh, went on sale yesterday. Uh, you, you should rush out and get them. They're, they're going to go They're going to go quick. Uh, but you, you want to get out there and get those tickets. Um uh, but I'm I'm very excited to have him back on. We had a great show last year. He ran us through the program and the festival and kind of how everything is going to work with people coming back into theaters and coming back to live events. It's fun uh, to have people back in a room together celebrating stuff. Uh, Renee, thank you for being back on the show. I appreciate it. Sonny, it's such a pleasure to, to speak with you and to be on again. Thank you for having me. And I can't believe it's been a year already, <laughs> but been... indeed it has. Here we are. Been a year, been a year. Uh, so you know, I, one thing, one thing we talked a little bit about last year, didn't get into the to the weeds too much on, um, is it is how the the festival actually comes together, how the uh, how you guys kind of set the program, set the set the festival, and I, I was curious about the mechanics uh, therein. I mean, is it is it a is it a function where you guys sit down and you're like, all right, we we've got we want to we want to get people from this show, this show this show and this show, and then you start sending out feelers and, and build from there. Do you go to the networks and say, hey, what do you want to, who, who do you have on tap to promote this year? What do you guys want to talk about? Um, what is that, how does that actually work for you guys? You know, it, it's, it's many of those things. It's actually all of those things and a whole um, array of other things. You know, one great benefit we do have um, at the Paley Center, and I guess almost everybody now has on their social media platforms, is that we hear from from uh, our members and we hear from the general public about the shows that they would like to see at the festivals. You know, people are uh, passionate about television and especially passionate about the shows that they really watch. And that's clearly evident right now at the, you know, when we are, it's such an embarrassment of riches in terms of the amount of, of programming that's available television wise. So it's, I mean, it's hard to make a decision as to what you're going to watch each night. So it's equally hard to, to make a decision about what we're going to feature at the festival. And I think it, it always, uh, there, there's, there's core facets about the selection process. And a lot of it is like you're, you're looking at television, uh, the landscape currently, and what's resonating, uh, what's resonating both from a critical standpoint from an audience uh, standpoint, uh, what is um, shows that are doing something new or a milestone that we could tie something to. And there's, there's a few milestones as part of this year's lineup. So that factors in, that's one little bucket. Uh, and then, you know, hearing from our members as the Paley Center is a member organization, you can become a member and we do events like this all year long. Plus we, you know, preserve this incredible archive uh, of television spanning a hundred years. Um, and so hear from our members and we hear from the general public. And then we sort of put all of that in, into a bucket and come up with a list of shows that we think this is what we really want to try to feature. And all through the year, because we do programming through the year, we're also hearing from the networks and studios where our, our wonderful partners about, Hey, you know, take a look at this show. It's coming up. We think it might work for a Paley kind of program or, or, or the festival. So that uh, goes into consideration as well. So it's a soup of, of all manner of different things. And then, you know, the big, the big question is, is, is scheduling because everything is, you know, people are shooting at different times. Uh, the, the particular, if a show, let's say, is, is, has stopped shooting, cast and producers might have gone on to another project and not be available to be all together in one place. So there's there's so many factors that end up affecting. There's there's shows that we were hoping to do this this festival that we just it didn't align timing wise uh, with talent uh, or you know production schedule. So that's that's a big you know, factor and roadblock that we have to overcome, not just for Paley Fest, but really in any of our programming throughout the year. Does that sure, make sure. sense? Yeah. No. Uh, I mean, I you know there there's such a I mean, I feel like Paley Fest is a is is a big deal. Like people people you know like to come and like to 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 celebrate TV. And uh, I'm always kind of blown away by the level of talent uh, that that shows up for these things. I mean, it really is like uh, it it it. it I, 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 this is gonna this may sound 
I, I don't want this to sound come out the wrong way, but it's like a plus version of Comic Con, right? Where Comic Con you have like all these big stars showing up, and you know, but this is like a, a smarter version of Comic Con. Maybe put it that way, or or a I don't I like I feel like now I'm insulting Comic Con, which I'm not no. trying to do either. But it You're... but it's very but it's but it's you know there there you guys have uh you have a limited amount of space. Um, yeah. And a lot of a lot of you know shows that I'm sure would want to be there to be celebrated and uh, you know kind of connect with folks. So it's it's interesting to see you know how that that process um, comes together. You mentioned milestones as one of the uh, one of the factors that goes into uh, to trying to figure out what you want on the on on in the festival. What was one of the milestones you guys looked at this year and was like, hey, this is a this is a show that we need to we really need to get somebody. Uh, out here to talk about sure first just just double backing here on uh i i know you met no slight to comic-con as well too they they, they do they do <laughs> wonderful things all over the no no that's the, I, it, this is I, I, as i was asking together. the question i was like this is coming out horribly i'm not no. i'm not trying to insult uh comic-con or or paley uh, yeah. i've just i but it's it, it but it feels like a very similar sort of thing where you have a limited yeah. amount of space you have a ton of people there to celebrate the stuff um, and and uh, there's huge competition for for that space. Of course, which is and, and just I'll, interesting. I'll tell you what I think the difference is. Um, obviously, we're Comic Con embraces uh, all worlds of film and television and you know print media for their for their events. This the festival specifically is television specific and television in all its forms. You know across broadcast and and streaming and and digital uh, but with a focus in the in television solely and i think also because we're a nonprofit organization that's dedicated to celebrating television and the creative process of tv across over 40 uh, well 40 years for the festival our organization is over 50 uh over 50 years uh running and so the the perspective when you're a cast and you're on a stage at Paley Fest being honored by the organization for your creative achievement, you're also part of a festival that welcomed Lucille Ball, welcomed, you know, the, the pioneers of television who, who, who sort of built the, the industry that we have today and the art form that we have today from at a whole clock. And so there's, there's that continuum of, of, of you're a part of, of what makes this medium great. And I, I think that, yeah. so that's, that might be a different aspect yeah. of why uh, that differentiates, differentiates us from other festivals. Um, and then in terms of your milestones question this year, well, an incredibly significant series that we're featuring, uh, the, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel is just about to in, in the premiere, it's final season, the fifth and final season early next year. So that, we, we knew we wanted to sort of have that show back and that cast back because we we had them during their first season and now to just sort of span the, the time. So we get those, oh, this is another big part of it. We film these conversations so they're, and they're added to the, to the archive. So you, we have like this record of history along with the programs we, we preserve regular television series episodes, uh, but these conversations with the people who made it happen and the conversation is different from season one to season five when you're reflecting more on the overall uh, arc of a series. Uh, so that that was one of them. The other is uh, the late, late show with James Corden, who has been a great friend to the festival. He's kicking off his final month of shows um, with our event in April. So that's going to be fun because he's, you know, his show sort of, upended the the late night talk show format and, and really brought the digital space into it in a different way than any other show had done really i think uh in, in a really effective way uh, with like these like carpal karaoke which became its own phenomenon uh the crosswalk musicals which i i think are really really fun but i uh, i so we wanted to have him again at this point in this, uh, in the run of his, of his, in the arc of his show, to be able to talk about uh, what it's been like and how he envisions, you know, the the, the future as well too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 
And he's been, you know, it just made me think we actually, before he started hosting the, the show, uh, he actually hosted one of our conversations with the cast of The Good Wife at Paley Fest, which was a great, a great night. And I'm saying this uh, out of school, but right before he went on stage, he said to me, he said to me as we were queuing him on, he said, oh, you know, I've, I've never interviewed anybody before. So it was like the first <laughs> time he'd interviewed uh anybody was on our stage and also in front of like two thousand people with the entire cast of the show there so uh, that that's a fun memory for us and and those kind of things yeah. happen all the time oh that's great well i that that kind of leads me to another question about how you pull these things together i mean i where when you're when you're looking at uh trying to get a um, somebody to host one of these panels or to moderate discussions, you know, where, where, where are you looking? Where's the talent pool? I mean, is it, it what, what names um, come to mind or where do they come from when you're trying to figure out how to put together a good, uh, you know, panel that really grabs both the, the attention of the panelists, which is not always easy. I've sat on some panels that have just been really poorly moderated. It happens. It's not, it's not fun. Uh, but, the 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 Paley Fest panel, panels are always great because everyone is like super into it and really excited uh, because in part the the host moderators do such a good job. Yeah, we're we're really fortunate with the folks uh, who who we have to to moderate our conversations. Uh, I think another another aspect that that you know, and I'll touch on the moderators as well, that makes it sort of the conversations uh, so good at the festival in addition to the moderator is the fact that the only agenda that the organization has is to celebrate the, you know, the creative achievement of these particular shows. There's nothing, we're not there to do any, any gotcha questions. Any, it's truly, we're saying, look, you've done great work and we just want to acknowledge it and acknowledge it with the audience, the, uh, the fans and the viewers who are so passionate about your show. Uh, and you're going to be there with them, and we're all going to be in one room just to say how great you are. So I, you know, that I think <laughs> makes people sets people at ease. Yes, it's the only. It truly is the only. Obviously, we want to have themes that we touch on and uh, during the conversation, but it's all driven by a look at the behind the scenes of the creative process of what it takes to make these incredible shows, both from the perspective of of an actor or a performer or the writers or the producers and then the component that's brought by the audience and viewers it's all an incredible interplay and then so for the moderators in addition to we're celebrating these folks we also want them to be comfortable with the person they're talking to and so i work with the studio and network teams and individual personal publicists about journalists uh, or writers or podcasters who who have an ease or familiarity with the show. I mean, you want to really have the person be familiar with the show. You can't get in a situation where where the audience is way more familiar with what what you're talking to these folks about than the person on stage. It just doesn't yield a, a very good conversation. And occasionally um, we, we, we think, oh, maybe there's a, a, a celebrity who's a who's or another performer or an actor, another writer who's a fan of the show that might um, have a different spin on, on the conversation. The last time we hosted The Late Late Show, which was actually during the pandemic, so we were virtual, Andrew Rannells hosted the conversation because he's been on the show so many times and a, and a, mm-hmm. and a good part. And it was, it was great. That interplay is totally different than an interplay with, you know, um, some uh, you know someone like you who hosts who hosts this incredible podcast um or a journalist you know and then and then we have the other aspect that we do take questions from the audience towards the last part of the program so they get that interplay as well um sometimes that sometimes <laughs> thankfully not too much at at our at at paley fest but it's, it's it can be a mind <laughs> minefield of uh uh, but the audience shoes those people down really quick when, when someone says, oh, I have a script that I want you to read. You know, that's just not what, <laughs> what this is about. It's, it's about uh, it's about like how you made this show happen. And, and yeah. know, our, our audience questions really 
run the line of that. So yeah, it's it, the moderators are drawn from from all the world, but we do want them to have some kind of you know connection to or uh, knowledge, good knowledge of 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 the topic that we're covering that night. So that's why we end up working with a lot of the same <laughs> the same great folks uh, through the years because we know that they're good. Yeah, uh, good hopes. yeah. That, no, it's and it, it, whatever whatever you're doing, keep doing it because it, it works. Mm-hmm. It, it, it is it's it's perfect. Um, one last one last kind of big uh, idea question. Uh, you know, you you mentioned that one of the things that's uh, really interesting about Paley Fest and the Paley Center in general is the continuity. Right, the, there's a you're you're on the same stage as Lucille Ball, or maybe not the same stage, but the you know the same festival as yeah. Lucille Ball and. Uh, you know, there there's a there's a idea of television as this thing that exists from decade to decade and goes on. But it's also very much a medium in flux. I mean, you know, we've gone from three broadcast networks to well, four broadcast networks and then to cable, basic cable to pay cable um, to streaming. I mean, there's so many more options now. There's so much. Uh, more ground to cover from, you know, from your perspective as somebody who who has been who, you know, kind of schedules these festivals and, and, and helps figure out what to talk about. How has that expansion uh, changed the the scope or the expanse of the the festival? I mean, what what has it done for your job? Has it made it easier? Has it made it harder? I mean, there's more to choose. There's more great stuff to choose from, which is nice. But that also makes it hard because then you've got to make tough decisions. Yeah, it's 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 made it it's wonderful. First of all, we're in a, an incredible golden age of uh, wonderful shows, wonderful performances. Uh, you know that unfortunately, a lot of times people don't see them because mm-hmm. there's just so much. We it's it's unbelievable the amount the amount of of viewing options we have. And then when I you know when I started doing this when I started working on this festival, I worked for the organization for 18 years and I started working on Paley Fest shortly after that. Um, it was an entirely different, entirely different world. We didn't have streaming. If you, you there were no time shifted viewing options. It was basically the, the you know, the three major networks and cable. Uh, and the only way you, you, you could time shift your viewing is if you had a VCR and you were videotaping the show yourself so you can watch it whenever you wanted to. Um, so the, um, the, the amount of programming is, is a gift in terms of because you, there's just so much good work to be able to celebrate. So you have, and it's a gift, but it's also a, uh, a challenge because, you know, you'd like to celebrate more than you can and it, and it just doesn't always work out that way. That's why having the ability to do programs throughout the year um, just gives us a little bit more coverage. And then you'll want to make sure you're covering the entire you know, landscape of television in some way or another. You know, broadcast television, there's some incredible stuff happening in broadcast television, but oftentimes all um, what gets coverage is shows that are happening on, on streaming platforms because it's the shiny, it's not even the shiny new thing anymore. It's just the, sh- mm. the, the shiny thing. Um, but there's, there's great work happening in every uh, space of television. So uh, it's, it's more challenging. It is, um, it's, it's better in a lot of ways. I think the, in terms of the, of the festival itself, not every great show is going to be the right fit for a festival that happens in a, in a lar- as large a space as the one we hosted in. We, you know, we're, our home right now is the Dolby Theater in Hollywood where they host the Academy Awards. It's a pretty big, daunting mm-hmm. room. Yeah. And when we started doing the festival, uh, you know, broadcast television was king. And most people, most of the shows had this ginormous audience of people watching uh, shows every week. And now that that is totally different. The, the era of like, uh, you know, 20, 30 million people watching a show at the same time and having that sort of communal communal experience is it, it happens with live event programming all the times like uh, uh, you know sports programming or with sure. um, eventized programming another way but we're we're 
oh, most people are watching on their own schedules. And the, so the audience size diminishes and you want to make sure that's part of the, the spe- you don't want to ha- program a show that you, even though it's totally worthy of programming for the festival, that that's, you know, they're going to be not as many people as you'd hope to be in the audience tonight. So that's, that's a, a factor as well. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is hard because, and it's hard to tell because, you know, we do have Nielsen ratings now for streaming shows, but yeah. it is still very kind of hit and miss who's getting covered, who, who isn't. Um, and so and I can understand. media has, you know, that has a, in a lot of ways has a huge outsize influence than it doesn't always correlate something that could be, you know, getting a lot of attention on social media might not work in this room. It just doesn't draw the the same. And then people's viewing habits in different parts of the country are different. We're, we're, you know, we're, we're based in Southern California though. And we also have a, our home for the organization. The museum itself is in New York city and the viewing habits of those areas might be different than, you know, what's resonating mm-hmm. in different parts of the country. So that you have to weigh that as well, too. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk about let's talk about a show that is uh, that's big all over the country, but it has gotten a lot of attention for being big specifically in kind of, you know, uh, the the middle of the country. Right. Yellowstone. Huge, huge, big success. Biggest show. I mean, biggest show on cable, I think. I, I'm Biggest show just about on TV. Um, right now is making its, I believe, your, the debut at the Paley Fest, right? This is its first first it year. Is, it is. It is. It, we're really excited to be able to to have the cast and creative team on stage. It's because it's it's a phenomenon and it's a, it's a global phenomenon. And, uh, you know, Paramount Network, it's on. and and But the show has sort of hit on something a lot of times people call you know i refer to like succession on horseback or succession you know <laughs> yeah in, in that different space because it is that sort of family core family dynamic that really i think has drawn people to the show in a big way which that formats that work over time people find new new spins on them and and uh, new the the, the the special sauce that a, a performer, an actor like Kevin Costner brings in, ter- in, in terms of getting attention to a show and getting a um, level of, of, of uh, authenticity to it, I think uh, is an amazing factor in it as well. But you have to hand it to Taylor Sheridan because he's, he's created this whole, whole universe of its own, not just Yellowstone, but what's come after it, like um, Mayor of Kingstown uh, with Jeremy Renner, 1883. Uh, there's just, it's it's incredible. And it is, I think, the, the biggest story in television right now. And uh, finally, almost, uh, you know, almost, well, five seasons in, we, we, we mm-hmm. tried several times. It just didn't, it just had not, had not worked. Um, and we're happy to have them, have them this time. Yeah, will will Taylor Sheridan be at the the festival? Uh, I can't, I can't, I, I don't have yeah. the release in front of me. I've got he, he ske- will be there. He's scheduled to to appear. Currently, you know, we always have to put a caveat right. on all of these right. things because, like anybody else, anything can happen. Yeah. Last year, we were dealing with, uh, we were still in really a, a big COVID time, so sometimes people would test positive before the, the night before the panel. Yeah. So we'd have to we would zoom them in on occasion so they would still be part of it. So we currently, yes, we do. We would be okay. Are expecting Taylor Sheridan, and, and and thrilled that he. Yeah, I I'm I'm really I'm I'm uh, excited to get. I, I would uh, I'm going to try and get a, a stream of, some, of it. Maybe at some point we'll see because I, I I cannot be there unfortunately. Um, but the uh, I I'm really fascinated to hear from him because he is he is the big story in TV right now. I mean, like a modern Dick Wolf, basically. Like he's out there, mm-hmm. kind of creating multiple franchises he's working he's got you know shows on a bunch of networks he's working in streaming he's working on basic cable uh like it's it's really kind of amazing what he is doing so i'm excited to see um what he has to say about the landscape of television and and where things stand yeah absolutely and and it's the the 
Dick Wolf analogy is apt, though, though Dick Wolf remains a modern day Dick Wolf. It's well, right. That I mean, that's yeah. how the the amount of shows uh, that his that Wolf films puts out, and the, and the level of quality and the engagement, and there are shows that that are not just uh, you get the first run, but you know, Law and Order from many different incarnations and many different seasons is still appointment television. Like you can just turn it on. And dig into that show, and as viewers do, you know, around the world. But to have that franchise and all its iterations, the Chicago franchise and all its iterations, sure. on, on the CBS network, he's got he's got the, the whole FBI franchise. I, I, I mean, it's it's an incredible world, and how they keep it all going. But there are a lot of Uber producers like that, and just in different ways. Uh, Shonda Rhimes, of course, too, in in, in um, her ABC Network series, but also the work she's been doing on on Netflix. Uh, Greg Berlanti, who's right. <laughs> it seems like he had forty eight shows going at one time, <laughs> and um, and he's and he's wonderful. They're all and Ryan Murphy in in Ryan Murphy different Ryan. ways as well. There, and I think what uh, I mean, I haven't. I don't. I I assume it's this way for Taylor Sheridan. I, I haven't. Uh, uh, his this is a whole new um, newer area than the other producers who we've actually had on our stages many times. But one thing that 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 links all of them is they're all um, very collaborative, and they're they're though they might be uh, in name at the at the executive producer helm of it. They have they have lifted up so many other producers and writers um, and performers. And, get, and brought all of these new voices to the medium. And they're all, they're, they're comfortable to let this, uh, let this person who's, who's got these great ideas take the lead and, and, and them to take a backseat on some of their shows as, a, as an executive producer. And that's an, yeah. that's an incredible skill. And it's, those people have really changed the, the landscape of television. Yeah, well, I mean, you gotta, you gotta be able to do that if you're running, you know, five six different shows i mean i can't yeah. even imagine how shonda rhimes does it with the the schedule that she's you know putting out on netflix and yeah uh, ryan murphy always seems to have about 17 shows coming out at any any given time you know it's it's an incredible uh, it's crazy. year for him and i don't i don't know if you uh got to see the 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 golden globes broadcast where they uh, they gave him carol burnett award but his speech was so moving because his his speech was all about shining a light on other people who've made uh, what he's achieved possible. And he singled out. It was just beautiful. It's nice to see yeah. uh, people brought along for the ride. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about uh, the the opening. I mean, we haven't even talked about the the epic opening night celebration here with the, the Mandalorian crew. I mean, the Mandalorian is a phenomenon. Uh, I think, you know, you could credit it. You could arguably credit it with um single-handedly launching Disney Plus into, you know, a, into a viable Netflix competitor, one show kind of just like really blew up and 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 did that. Um John Favreau, Dave Filoni, uh and Rick uh I can never pronounce his name, uh Rick Famuyiwa. I don't I'm terrible. Good. I'm I'm terrible. I I'm, I may be close there, but and there's going to be more people. So what what are what are the folks uh, going to be talking about for the Mandalorian and and um, uh, on their panel? Well, um, they'll have just launched season three, which is really exciting. Everybody's you know hotly anticipating that, um, and it's you know it's been a long road with the Mandalorian. We actually had the Mandalorian um, scheduled, and it was going to be part of the festival in uh, our that was 2020 lineup and then just like the week before the world yeah. you know changed and we had to postpone the festival so this is now the first time we're having them back um in person since that time and yeah it has it was it was a new story a new phenomenon then but it, the the universe it's it's created the impact on on uh culture overall it is uh, worldwide is, is amazing so I'm, yeah. I'm anxious to get get them on stage and get that conversation going and have that record of, of how 
now after have, uh, having three seasons done and creating this other this world of other shows that um, you know it really brought Star Wars to television in in this live action format and um, and yes I, I agree with you I would say I would venture across everybody at Disney and Disney Plus would agree <laughs> with saying that yes it helped establish a network and that was an incredible um, move for Bob Iger at that time to 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 not only bring that whole um, uh, the Star Wars universe into the fold at, at uh, Disney, uh, um, along with you know, so many other um, incredible tent poles, but to give it this platform, this global platform, uh, and um, it's a great story. It's and I'm I'm really happy to have him back, have have him here yeah. for the first time, yeah. but oh, back yeah. nonetheless. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's also just a really interesting show from a technological perspective. I mean, the the introduction of the volume, the giant LED rooms that they can use to you know yeah. shoot things uh, more more quickly, more efficiently, more cheaply. Um, uh, without sacrificing too much in terms of quality is is really I mean it, it is a game changing sort of thing uh, for for not just you know not just Disney and Star Wars but the industry writ large. Uh, absolutely, and uh, other folks have, have tried to to catch up and adapt uh, some of those um, some of those methods. But tech, yeah, technologically, it is uh, an incredible feat, and there's a, a huge array of artisans who work to make all of that happen but it also i think comes down to storytelling good storytelling well performed by uh, a, a, an incredible uh, cast of characters an incredible directing team and writing team it, it's it, it those things are what draw people in uh yes the um, the epic scale of it draws it you. but if you don't have a good story there's shows that are epic that just go yeah. mm. <laughs> Especially yeah. <laughs> now when we have so much, so many choices um, to want to watch. Yeah, um, you know, you you mentioned uh, wanting one of the nice things about the festival is that you f can focus on broadcast networks. And I, I, this is one thing I actually really I love about the festival is that it, it un, unlike unlike critics certainly, um, you know, I consider I, I include myself in this. You know, uh, who have kind of a tendency to ignore broadcast shows just because that's not you know what the cool buzz is all about it's still where you're gonna find the the highest rated individual programming um so you know a show like Grey's anatomy you know doesn't get a ton of talk you know from critics and and you know the 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 highbrow set but it is still immensely popular still very good people still watch it uh all the time um and they're going to be on the stage with uh, also Abbott Elementary right I or, I mean not the same time but you know uh, that they, would be fun. Abbott Elementary all <laughs> another another network TV show uh is going to be there to to um, you know, celebrate what they're doing. Uh, so I, I, the the Grey's Anatomy panel I was looking at. There's there's like 20 people on that list. How are you going to fit them all on the stage? I, I don't know. I don't. Know. Are, I don't bringing know. in it, risers? Is yeah, there going to be a you know? <laughs> it'll happen. It'll happen. It'll happen somehow. We last year we had a we had an event that celebrated the NCS franchise. We had three panels in one conversation it was like it was like oh you got a clock we're getting those people <laughs> on and off stage and getting audience question time it was it was amazing but it was it actually turned out beautifully but yes when you look at something like uh gray's anatomy that continues to to reinvent itself it's 19 seasons in 19 seasons to be able to tell stories across that time and they're not doing seven episodes and, and we're done they're doing 22 episodes across uh across a season and um, it's a testament to the the storytelling on that show and how people still still are invested in it and new people come to it, um, you know. And, and the the incredible producers, Krista Vernoff, who is uh, sort of heads that show, along with Debbie Allen, who's also uh, an actor on the show and has this incredible groundbreaking career in television. And the the, the, the ensemble cast, it's really a true ensemble, and there's a lot of Newer folks have, have joined that um, have joined that ensemble this year that we're going to have, and it's it's we've had we had the show uh, during one of its early seasons, and to have it back now it's 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 wonderful, and I agree as you were saying earlier that you know broadcast TV which does command the widest swath of an audience, especially at a at a 
very specific time and now with uh you know time shifted viewing as well too I, I don't know why it doesn't always get the attention that it deserves because it's, it's, there's just as good material and a diversity of material um, content on broadcast that there is in streaming. But, you know, we tend to run to what's shiny and, and new in terms of, of coverage. So at least as part of the festival, I'm proud that we get to to recognize what's going on uh, in that part of the landscape as well, too. Abbott Elementary, of course, is one of the huge stories in television. Uh, it's just a show that's filled with heart, and I think people have taken that uh, taken that to their own hearts, really, and made it such a, a big hit. Whether they're watching it, uh, you know, as it, when it when it runs on Wednesday nights, or they're watching it when they've DVR'd it, or on a on a on a streaming platform. People have fallen in love with it around the world, and and it's uh, you know focusing on it on education and uh, educators, especially at this time in our uh, culture and our society, and 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 the difficulties and challenges of, of of teachers and and the dedication that they and that they put into what they do. That this show shines a light of sh- shines a light on that right now, I think is beautiful. And the ensemble is, yeah. is so much fun. You know, uh, Tyler James Williams, who uh, obviously just is one of the leads on the show. We had him when he was a kid at the festival for his show, Everybody Hates Chris. So uh, it, it's fun to see that. That's part of that continuum of I I was here when I was, you know, 11 years old. And now I'm I'm on this in, in, incredible show and, I, and I'm back again. Yeah. Um, so that's fun. That is fun. That is fun. Well, that was that was pretty much everything I wanted to ask. I think I hit on all the major. Oh, Yellow Jackets. I I, I didn't mention Yellow Jackets, but that's another another panel that's yeah. uh, coming up. Hit Showtime series. People love. Uh, people love that show. Um, Incredible but, uh, ensemble. Be... Yeah, it should it should be fun and uh, fun as well too because their season two premieres just right before uh, their their festival date. So that's going to be good to have that yeah. big group. That's another big group. God, that's gonna be yeah, that is another. That's another very large. Uh, again, you're gonna have to bring risers out onto the stage <laughs> to get everybody on there to get to get everybody into the conversation. Um, uh, as you know, I like to close the uh, interview by asking if there's anything I should have asked. If there's anything you think folks should know about uh, Paley Fest, Paley Center, what 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 did I not ask? Uh, what do you think folks should know about uh, what you what you do and what what you've got coming up? I, I, there's nothing that you that you didn't ask. We covered so many wonderful things. I uh, and I appreciate the opportunity to be able to talk about television and 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 because it's something that, that we just we love and the festival is about love. Um, just to know that the the Paley Center, if you're if you love TV and you're passionate about um, celebrating and preserving its legacy, we're a good organization to be a part of because that's what we do and we'd love to welcome you to our our member community uh, you'll find uh, lots of events like this uh, throughout the year and you'd be helping us preserve this incredible work and this incredible legacy and you get early access to tickets uh if yes if, early if, access if and, and a discount is, exactly i want to i want to emphasize that it's not just feel good you know celebrate television support the museum it's also you get something you, you do, do something. you do get you do get something in, important in, so. including the knowledge that you're helping to preserve yes <laughs> including including yes there's you know it's you, you uh, yes. i'm i'm I'm, I'm, I want to get people into the organization yeah. uh, and get them to the festival because it's fun. It really is. It is uh, I have always been slightly jealous of not living uh, on on the West Coast because I would love to. Uh, maybe maybe next year I, I'll get out there. But uh, yeah, watching the panels on YouTube and, and thank you, thank you. But it, it's it's so much fun just to watch the panels on uh, on on my computer. I can't imagine how great they are in person. So uh, mm-hmm. you go check it out. Um, tickets on sale now. Uh, and and find a, find a panel you like and, and check it out. Uh, uh, my name is Sonny Bunch. I'm the culture editor at The Bulwark, uh, and I'll be back next week with another episode of The Bulwark Goes to Hollywood. We'll see you guys then. It could be information to change your life forever. 
or the Something You Should Know podcast could just be something interesting. We're talking about the benefits of play. My guest is Joanna Fortune, author of the book, Why We Play, How to Find Joy and Meaning in Everyday Life. Playfulness in the life of adults in terms of its psychosocial impact is understudied, if anything. But the research that is available does point to a myriad of pro-social benefits and psychological benefits. Something You Should Know, wherever you listen.